Hey guys, Joe from Eastwood. In this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the perfect bead rolling setup for your home shop. So Eastwood offers a ton of different bead roller setups. We have everything from our little baby eight inch version all the way up to the professional 36 inch motorized heavy duty unit with stand and speed control foot pedal with all the bells and whistles. So we have options, but this video is going to focus on what our most popular setup is. This is what the average guy is going to look at for the ultimate bead roller setup at home. We're going to walk through all the parts that are in this setup and we're going to show you what it's capable of by rolling a floor pan. All right, so let's start with the bead roller itself. This is going to be Eastwood's 19 inch metal bead roller. This bead roller has a throat that's 19 inches deep. That means you can reach the middle of a 38 inch panel. This is where we see more automotive applications start to open up. The eight inch is capable, but you're going to be welding panels together and the 27 is great for the larger stuff. The 19 is going to fall perfectly into the middle. It gives you the capability, but it keeps the cost where you want it to be. This has 22 millimeter shafts and it comes with four mandrels. There's a quarter inch, 3 8 inch and half inch bead die and a set of our adjustable offset dies too. This is capable of forming up to 18 gauge steel, 16 gauge aluminum and 20 gauge stainless. It's tough and won't flex when you're bead rolling the heavier gauges. It's constructed out of half inch solid steel plate. It's our most popular unit and the reason for that is that there's a bunch of different ways you can upgrade this thing as you go and make it perfect for whatever it is that you need. Let's take a look at some of the attachments we have for this bead roller. So once you get your bead roller, you're going to need a place to put it. You could throw this thing into the vise. That's great if you don't have too much space in the shop or if you're bead rolling only every now and again, but the best option is gonna be what you see here, the bead roller stand. The stand is made from heavy duty square steel tube with an H-frame construction that's finished in a layer of powder coat. It has a convenient rack to store all your dies on the main support and everything is gonna be right in reach because of that. And the big bonus here is that it has a 360 degree swivel head. Now your bench vise can probably swivel too, but your bench is going to get in the way, right? So the stand allows you to attack your workpiece from any angle. And as a rule of thumb, if you're comfortable when working, rather than being contorted and twisted in a weird way, the work is gonna turn out better as well. Now, keeping with that same idea of being comfortable, there's also the bead roller table attachment. Now, this is gonna keep your workpiece nice and level, of course, but the biggest benefit of the table that I feel is that it's going to be a place to rest your hands. It keeps the old bicep and tricep from getting tired and it gives you a place to balance your weight. That's great for our next attachment, the bead roller motor. This motor attaches to all the hand crank bead rollers we offer and it has a foot pedal to control it. As far as I'm concerned, the table is a must for that reason. It allows you to have a place to rest your hands so you can balance on one foot, use the pedal with the other foot to operate the motor. The motor is a powerful 1 6 horsepower, 120 volt, and it's geared for a 75 to one reduction. So it's nice and torquey, easily goes right through the heavier gauges. It has a switch on the side, which allows it to run in both forward and reverse directions and a potentiometer, which allows you to adjust the speed that it rolls at. Now, the beauty of the 19 inch bead roller is that we have a lot of accessories to go along with it. So if you're looking to get started with bead rolling and pick up upgrades as you need them, this could be a build that you ultimately end up going with. You can see that our 19 inch bead roller is looking pretty flashy if you ask me. You don't really need anything else to get started, so let's put it to the test and I'll show you how to roll a floor pan. All right, guys, so we have our design laid out. We're gonna do a few things to this panel. Up here, we're gonna do an offset square. We're gonna use the offset dies for that. We're also gonna do a flange down this side. We're gonna use the offset dies for that as well. But first, we're gonna start with these straight lines. We're gonna use the bead dies for that. Now, bead rolling is super easy. First step, you're just gonna make sure that top shaft is nice and loose and then slide in the metal. We're just gonna put that where our line is gonna start. Obviously, we're gonna start with this guy here. Now we have to apply some downward pressure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it so this knob is contacting the metal and we start to feel a little bit of pressure right there. So that's gonna be our start position. Reason we want that is because we're gonna count how many turns we tighten this. 
Uh, I use the test piece. It's always a good idea to use a test piece, but we're going to crank this down two and start rolling a beat. There's one and two. All right, so that's one bead done. Now, before we loosen this up, you want to make sure you count the turns off. Uh, in this case, just to get this out, we might need an extra one. So that's one turn, two, and one more. Three. All right. And that looks pretty good. So we're going to move on to the next line and do the same thing, remembering that we loosen this three times. Excellent. So we have our bead where it needs to be to start, and we're going to crank that down three times and roll that bead as well. So it's one, two, three. Alright, not looking too shabby, we're going to switch over to our offset dies and finish off this piece. So we slowed down for the corners. I'm just going to turn that back up just a little bit for the straights. All right, not too bad. Pretty close to all my lines, so I'm just going to put this right back in and roll our final flange up the side. All right, guys, so not too bad here. I'm happy with how this turned out. It's looking pretty good, and really it just goes to show how good this setup can be. Really the perfect setup for rolling whatever it is that you need for your project. But if you are interested in other options, we do have a buyer's guide posted, give that a watch, and we have an accessories guide as well, so you can figure out exactly what you need for your bead roller setup to make it perfect for you. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Joe. Make sure you keep it right here at Eastwood to do the job right.